Nice to meet you guys. Sorry. Nice to meet Great you. to meet you. I guess my first question is, what are you guys looking for? I mean, there are so many talents that a chef really needs to have to be a, a, a good chef. What What is the most important one? Is there one? Well, there's more than one. There's many. Uh, you know, I have to say drive, curiosity, um, the ability to deal with pressure, because this competition is packed with pressure. Right. Yeah. What do you think, Michael? I would agree. I, I think that uh, having an open mind, being prepared to uh, learn and develop because they're going to be listening to the judges and hopefully moving up that scale of professionalism. And if you can't uh, take criticism, commentary, feedback, hmm. you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to stay at the same level because you think you know it all. And there's a lot out there that think that. <laughs> I, I'm looking for a good. I'm looking for. I'm looking for good food on a plate. See, I mean, you know, they come in, they say a lot of things, they say how driven they are, they say how much they want it. I want to see, I, I want to see it on the plate, you know. You can say a lot of things. Talk is cheap, that's what we're trying to say. But, you know, food on the plate, show me you can do it, that's what I look for. Well, for you guys becoming judges, I mean, I, I find that always interesting when, uh, you know, you guys are professionals, but moving into the atmosphere of this kind of television show, what what are you guys prepared to uh, to do? I guess as judges. Hmm. Whatever it takes to find the number one cook in the country, really. Uh, I think a lot of it, though, is going to be really. Um, it's the word. Resting on how we mentor and how we how we teach. Um, but it's a huge responsibility to be on, on the show and, and, and be judging. Yeah, look, I think uh, in the restaurant business, you're constantly being judged look by your guests. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Sorry, by your guests, and uh, so we're under the under that judging criteria constantly. Right. Uh, and that I think is a part of who we are, and that will continue through um, our judging process uh, in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, who I am today in terms of how critical I am about what it is my cooks put out on a plate, how we teach, train and develop, uh, the way the restaurant looks is going to be exactly the same attitude I take to each and every plate, each and every home cook. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me because it's real. What's the question again? In so long. I can't concentrate. Right? <laughs> What's the question again? It's, 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 I'm really curious yeah. <laughs> what do you think it takes to become a judge for a show like this because it is such a change from you know what you normally do. It's it's a bit of an adjustment. Well, you know, you have lawyers who become judges. You have uh, a judge has to be fair and you have to be impartial, mm -hmm. I think. Just judge on base. You have to be you clear your mind of emotion and say this dish makes it this, and then you look at the person that made the dish but look at the dish first before I look at the person now if the dish makes it then I don't have to do anything go to if the dish does not make it then I look at the person I said you know should will this guy have potential so the first thing I look at is the dish is the perfect dish no questions asked go through Okay, so it's like a judge giving giving sentence. Okay, you know if you're guilty as hell, you go and walk in jail. But you, I look at the person. The guy seems like you know he's he's he is uh, regretful. Then you know I take a couple of days off the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I won't, you know, I'll execute him. But uh, you know, I won't do. I won't do it like twice. True, I won't do it twice. You know? Spoken like a true demon chef. <laughs> <laughs> so. In terms of uh, the ingredients, I mean, there are some really unforgiving ingredients, and I mean, obviously, some of those ones are going to come up. What do you guys think are some of the the hardest things that maybe people don't realize are that hard to cook? Um, I think cooking with Asian ingredients is one of the most difficult uh, to really master uh, because ing those, those ingredients are very powerful, very intense. Uh, for example, too much soy sauce and you have a very salty dish. Too much lemongrass and your dish will taste like soap. Uh, too much ginger and your mouth will burn. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes the home cook will underestimate uh, 
the Asian ingredient um, arsenal. Um, and I think Alvin's going to be a great teacher there because he's an expert in that field. I, I would agree. I think that uh, Asian ingredients is a, is a good example. I could apply the same to uh, Indian spices, mm -hmm. uh, nice. curries, that kind of thing. They are ingredients that uh, contestants or home cooks may not have cooked or worked with and it puts them in a very uncomfortable position. Mm. Uh, too much, too little, it can go either way. Also, the simplest of ingredients, poaching an egg, for example, <laughs> even for me at times, can be a very, very <laughs> difficult thing to turn out the perfect poached eggs right. once or twice. You know, what do they say again? It takes 10,000 hours to be an expert. I think for me is cooking with alcohol because I always drink it all before I use it. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, um, I would say something delicate, scallops, easily overcooked. And then you have something like chicken and pork. You know, if you want to test somebody, then do chicken or pork because they're either going to overcook it or they're going to undercook it. So you really have to learn the techniques and and this will basically show me whether this guy is doing his homework and uh, and you know I, I think technique wise uh, the rest um, you know putting a dish together the flavors and that I mean a lot of that is subjective you know some people like spicy some people don't some people like the dish a lot of the cities, some people don't. So taste is actually subjective, but balance is always very important. Right. But to me, you know, what we can judge, because we can be subjective, is first thing we look for is technique. Well, my last question is kind of a little off. Uh, what would you say is a good tip for people at home who are trying to cook, who are trying to improve their cooking skill? Because, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to improve upon. What, what would be one tip? That's so easy. Just watch our show and you're going to learn how to cook properly. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, don't be afraid of being adventurous. It may not work out the very first time, second time, but by the third time I'm sure it'll be a whole lot better mm -hmm. and then you enjoy it. Um, Do you have a tip? Tip for cooking at home. Well, yeah. I think um, have a backup just in case you screw up. <laughs> you don't want to be starved to death. Um, that's a, you're adventurous. Um, I would say that work with something that you, you know, work with something simple. Mm. Work with something simple. It, may, it looks easy in a restaurant. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy at home. But you know, with the age of the internet, with cookbooks, you can actually teach yourself how to cook just looking at the internet. And I think use that, use that, and it's going to give you a lot of tips. And you know, all of us have probably done some, done some techniques on the internet and, and given us and learned from that. I think a lot of these informations could be very useful. Great, thank you.